And so I try to keep the whole thing as clean as possible, as simple as possible. So if I don't want any tube stuff in it, I just go around the back and disconnect it and plug <laughs> in the other stuff. Um, and that's kind of how I've ended up working. It, it's a little bit like how um, I started, actually, because... Um, you know, Paul, the aforementioned Paul Stubblebine is a bit of an audio file. So it was all kind of just plug in what you need. And, <laughs> and actually, I've, I've sort of kept that philosophy, really. I mean, you just know, use what you need. Just use what you need and make the signal chain as short as possible. Right. And, and, and not because otherwise you've got like stuff coming into one of those boxes on D subs and. There's miles of cable that stuff's going through, which it doesn't really need to. Yeah. Um, and I think it's kind of, um, yeah, so if you have really high quality cables and um, all of that stuff, every, every, you know, mastering is really about every small advantage that you can possibly get in the quality of the sound. You know, every, uh -huh. no matter how small. Mm hmm um, if it sounds better, then use it. You yeah, know, I love. I mean, that. don't just use like some people. I I'm actually appalled by there's many people on that um, Facebook group I mentioned that that are like wire is wire. It doesn't make any difference. And that is completely not true. Yeah, I've heard that it makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the mastering stage, you're really fighting for those small percentage points. So, like yeah. every little, it's it's interesting how you said it. It's a, it's interesting that you really just need to like fight for all those little minute little percentages, and yeah. then you get that better product. Because I think, I, I mean, I guess mastering is basically the last, I don't know, up to five percent of the of the of the the record. Yeah, if that, if that. <laughs> but you could, um, but if it's not mastered well, you can ruin everything. You well, know? exactly. And one of there's many ways that you can ruin it. With digital audio, is a pretty freaky thing. Um, clocking, for example, is mm -hmm. extremely important. Um, the thing about digital audio that I kind of figured out over the years is that when it degrades, <clears throat> it degrades in, in really very subtle ways. I mean, actually, it's a big problem, but for some reason, it's hard to perceive at the time when you're listening to it. Um, Bad clocking, if you have, your clocking situation is not right, all kinds of uh, bad things happen that are not perhaps immediately obvious, mm -hmm. um, such as uh, it affects dynamics badly from loud to soft. It'll kind of do weird stuff, you know, where something's supposed to come in and have a lot of impact. It, all of a sudden it sounds kind of weak. Mm -hmm. um, so to have your system clocked correctly is is very important. I mean, with a with a good clock, um, and I've tried a bunch of them. And I don't know the Lavery clocks that I use at the moment are the clocks in those things. I think are sound really good. 